The love of God, the faith of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Beacon, New York, where, together, we are bridging worlds, encountering God, and healing lives. I'm Luann Nolan. And I'm Jeffrey Nolan. And whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever your background, we are glad you're with us, and we hope you find just what your soul needs today. Earlier this week, we received the news that our pastor, Ben Larson Walbrink, will be leaving Beacon in August to start a new call in Michigan. This week, he will begin his final sermon series, loosely titled, Landscapes of the Soul. Today's sermon will be a visit to Mount Beacon. Later in the service, we will hear from our elders about what's next for our congregation. If you have a candle with you, we invite you to light it with us now as a reminder of the light of the risen Christ in all times and places. Our opening prayer today is from Psalms 86, 1 through 7. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I devote it to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I do cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiven, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my supplication in the day of my trouble. I call on you, for you will answer me. Amen. If you have water and a container, we invite you to pour the water with us as a reminder of the grace and power of baptism. Let us continue in prayer. O Lord our God, you call us to work for a world where all will be fed and have dignity. But we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace, but we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring the liberty to the oppressed, but we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, O Lord. Turn us to your will by power, by the power of your Spirit, so that all may know your justice and peace. Through tr Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Oh, and also with you. <laughs> we invite you to type your greetings of peace into the comment section. Also, you can grab your shakers or any other noisemakers available and get ready to join our young friends as we sing the Gloria Patri, our song of praise to the triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. in the villages 
and the countryside. People were coming to hear what he was saying. And they wondered who he was. Then Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem for Passover. It is there that I will be killed. But on the third day, God will make me alive again. The disciples could not believe this. Jesus taught them for six more days. Then Jesus took Peter, James, and John. And he went up a high mountain. They climbed the mountain. While Jesus was talking to God, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Then Elijah and Moses appeared beside him. Suddenly a cloud covered them and the disciples were terrified. And then they heard a voice. This is my special child whom I love. Listen to him. Looking around, the disciples saw only Jesus. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Come follow me. I wonder what it was like for those disciples, for Peter and James and John, what was it like to see Jesus changed like that? What was it like to have a cloud suddenly cover them and to feel so terrified? And I wonder what it was like to climb the mountain and if they felt tired maybe hungry and thirsty. Maybe they even wanted to turn back. I wonder if there were some people in the crowd who wanted to follow them too. I even wonder if there were some women who trailed behind and came to see what was happening. I wonder if they stayed terrified or if it helped that Jesus said, don't be afraid. And I would wonder what it was like to follow him after that. Let's pray. Holy God, help us to not be afraid, to trust your presence with us, and to follow you, remembering your promise to be with us to the end of the age. Amen. Hi, good morning. My name is Jonathan. And I'm Walter. 
And today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 through 8. Um, um, once upon a time, Jesus was leading three of his disciples up on top of a mountain. He took with him Peter, James, and his brother John. And on top of the mountain, he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. When he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground. Um, how and were overcome by fear. But Jesus touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, and be about the coming kingdom in this world you dearly love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So we are entering into our final weeks in ministry together here in Beacon, and I couldn't help but want to revisit some of the terrain that has been not only the backdrop of our time together, but has so much uh, to teach us. So much has been taught to me through this landscape, uh, and we have some invitations as we encounter God's Word in the context of the landscape that we love. So this next series is loosely titled Landscapes of the Soul, and it all starts with the mountain. For those of you who have been with me on this journey for 10 years now, you know that those first few years were filled with stories, experiences, inspiration on Mount Beacon. We are so blessed to have uh, the namesake mountain right here in our backyard. And our text today has a lot to teach us about how God is revealed on the mountain. So I just want to invite you to head up the trail with me as we encounter God's Word together. Ah, okay, uh, we're at our first stop. And uh, this is the place where I always stop going up the mountain and you can get a nice view of where we've been and a nice view of where we're going. And it's actually one of the hardest parts on the hike. And um, I just started thinking, 
never thought of this before, but of Peter, James, John, and even Jesus out of breath working their way up the mountain. It's hard work, and uh, I've been thinking about over the years all the hard work that you have shown up for. Uh, last minute music requests, uh, group emails, uh, mission projects that required all sorts of conversations with other organizations. Um, just the hard work of conversations together, uh, being in relationship with each other. Uh, it's hard work, uh, and when we get to the top, we'll see that it's worth it. Okay, uh, quick breather. Uh, we'll look back over our shoulders to see uh, where we've come. And that uh, that is a lot steeper uh, than it looks. <laughs> um, in this story today, uh, we're going to encounter Jesus on the mountain, along with Moses and Elijah. And uh, as we've been reading in our Bible study, we've seen the ways that Moses went up the mountain to get the covenant from God and that his face came down shining the second time. We also heard about Elijah and his journey on the mountain. And Elijah's journey on the mountain came after he was done. He was exhausted. He was in despair. He was giving up. And Moses certainly had those experiences as he journeyed with God's people in the wilderness. And uh, God said to Elijah, uh, get up and go, go to the mountain. Uh, there is more to be revealed there. So we're going to keep on pressing on. <sighs> All right, we're still walking and um, I was thinking something happens when you're exerting this much energy. Uh, we're headed, that's where we've been and this is where we're going. Uh, When you're focused so much on getting up the mountain, uh, you don't have energy for a lot of other stuff. Somehow, your body's focused on moving and surviving. And it's a lot easier to let go of worry and fear and uh, all the burdens we carry with us in our lives and sort of the overwhelmingness of the world and I've been on many, many hikes with people where we sort of work our way through the initial exhaustion, but then the conversation flows in a really beautiful and, and powerful way uh, when we let go of all of those worries and preoccupations. It's like something new uh, is opened up when we, when we do this work of headed up the mountain. And I think maybe that's why God reveals God's self so often in the Bible on the mountain, because we were opened in a new way uh, by the journey up. Um, and I have an idea of another reason why God reveals God's self on the mountain. This is one of uh, the other places where I take a break. Um, this is actually one of my favorite parts. Um, it, it's a turn in the mountain where it's hard to see them, but there are, there are multiple ways to go up. I always love to take this trail over my shoulder here, but a lot of people end up kind of going down that ridge there or even over there. And uh, <laughs> it's often the time in my hike when I think about uh, taking the high road and the low road. And everyone kind of has to take the trail uh, that works for them as they're going up the mountain. I know it's true for Jesus' disciples. Um, they each took their own path, uh, even as they were following Jesus. And uh, I want to invite you to trust uh, the way you need to walk uh, on the journey. So if you've ever been up Mount Beacon, you know that on the way to the top is uh, the ruins 
of the old wheelhouse uh, to the incline uh, that brought thousands of people in its heyday uh, from the bottom of Beacon to the top. And um, one of the things I love about Mount Beacon is uh, the way people love it, whether it's new Beacon or old Beacon or whatever divides are happening now. Whenever I started talking about the mountain, people were excited. Uh, I loved hearing stories about a former member, Chuck Hetty, who used to take the incline up and um, sell ice cream to the tourists up here years ago. I remember stories from Judy Analek's uh, departed husband, Jerry, who talked about riding up the incline with uh, fellow firefighters and he said all these tough guys from all over the state came down and kissed the ground because they were so terrified by the steepness of the incline. Something about these ruins uh, attracts everyone uh, remembering what was and it always feels like people are always at the same time trying to understand how it used to be, um, pondering ways it it could be. There have been so many ideas uh, to uh, rebuild from these ruins. All right, so we are at the top. And uh, of course, uh, you know the obvious other reason why I think God reveals God's self uh, on the mountain uh, because of the amazing perspective that it can give us. Um, and I'm excited to share that view with you now. Amazing. We are so blessed to have this view, this perspective, right here in our backyard. Uh, for those of you who live in Beacon, not many places can say that they have a view of their whole city right before them, uh, let alone uh, the, the wider and beautiful Hudson Valley. In our scripture today, those disciples, Peter and John and James, that went up with Jesus up the mountain, they, they gained a new perspective. They saw Moses, they saw Elijah, those men that they were familiar with who had gotten their own perspectives on the mountain. And yet in this story, we can relate to their impulse to want to stay in that place. Friends, we have so many moments of glory to celebrate over these past 10 years. And I can relate to Peter and wanting to just lock in and stay in that place. But Jesus invites us to head down the mountain. And Jesus invites us not only to have the perspective from the mountain, but the perspective from Jesus, God's gift of love, the beloved with whom God is well pleased with us and for us. And, and when we follow Jesus, we don't know exactly where we are going. We take the next step in faith, in trust. I'm so grateful for all of those mountaintop moments, all those moments of glory that we are have shared over the last 10 years. And uh, I know um, that we are headed on a new path, a new journey. I also know that God will be with us each step of the way. We don't know exactly where we're headed, but we know uh, that there will be a wonderful and glorious reunion one day. May it be so. Amen. And now it's time to head down the mountain.
My name is Renee Vitale, and some of you might know me from working with the kiddos in Godly Play, uh, but I'm also one of seven ruling elders on our session, and our job is to discern the will of God for our congregation and to nurture its life of faith. And you'll be hearing a lot from the seven of us in the coming weeks as we find ways to thank Pastor Ben for his service 
and ways to say so long for now to the Larson Wolbring family and plan for the future of our congregation. It's going to be really hard saying goodbye to Pastor Ben and Gretchen and Lily and Hope and Nathan. We love them so much and we're really going to miss them. And we thank God for the technologies that will allow us to stay connected with them even from afar. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the Larson Woolbrink family will be a blessing to their new church family um, because they've been a treasure to each of us. And even in our reluctance to see them go, we can send them off joyfully and with the peace that comes from trusting that this is God's will, not only for the Larson Wilburn family, but also for our congregation. And I'm hopeful for the possibilities that lay ahead for our congregation. And I want to assure you that we're in good hands during this time of transition. And the other elders and I are committed to continuing our faithful service. We're working with leaders from the Hudson Valley Presbytery who will guide our congregation in the process of finding a new pastor for our community. Um, we know that no one can ever fill Ben's shoes, um, but he's leaving us having cultivated a strong community and a great reputation for our congregation that will definitely attract another talented pastor. There's no doubt about that. And among the many things that Pastor Ben has taught us, one that sticks out to me is to always keep our hearts and our minds open to see the work that God is doing, even during difficult times, and maybe even especially during difficult times. And the way uh, Paul puts it in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Or as Pastor Ben put it when he told us of his moving on, all will be well. Let us trust that all will be well. And let us pray for Pastor Ben and his family as they prepare for this big move. Let us pray for each other as we uh, process this big transition. And... Um, I also ask that you pray for myself and the other elders as we um, lead our congregation during this time. So keep an eye out for more messages from us in the coming weeks. Thanks.
We are so glad to have you worship with us today. Your presence and support are such a gift to us. If you are in need of prayer, or if there's any other way we can be of assistance, please email us at office at com. If you would like to make a contribution to our Fix the Roof Fund, or simply support the ongoing ministry of First Presbyterian Church, you can send a check to 50 Liberty Street, Beacon, New York, 12508, or give an online contribution to our website, beaconpresbychurch.org. For those of you who are reading the story, The Abridged Bible by Max Licato, this week we are focusing on chapters 22 through 25, where we will learn about the birth and ministry of Jesus Christ, the living Word of God. Even as we anticipate the transition ahead, it is good to continue to be grounded in the living Word together. There will be a Zoom coffee hour following worship today at 11 a.m. An email with the link was sent out, but if you need it, let us know in the comments or send us a quick message. And now, may you be at peace wherever you are. Remember those who are out in the world, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you are, may the love of God, the faith of the risen Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.